Liberty Nation. Truth is making a comeback. Hello and welcome to Liberty Nation's LN TV. I'm your host, Mark Angelides, and today I'm joined by Bob the Builder, who is a uh, Christian speaker, uh, spends a lot of time down Speaker's Corner in the UK, uh, talking about the Bible, talking about his views on Christianity and politics. Uh, Bob is the main speaker for Soko Films, which you can check out on YouTube. They have over three and a half million views. Well worth watching. Uh, thanks for being here, Bob. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Wonderful. Uh, the first question I have for you is, what are your views on the intermarriage between politics and religion? Um, I think that it is, it is something that in the West we've fallen into the trap of thinking that politics and religion don't mix. Um, and I am completely the opposite. I think that that narrative, that, that belief system is something that evolved out of the Enlightenment and the humbling of the church that happened due to the Enlightenment. Um, Christ was once asked a question by a Herodian who were supporters of the public king Herod. And they asked him, teacher, good teacher, we know that you are not uh, someone who respects any person, what do you think then? Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? And Christ asked for a denarius and he said, whose uh, image and inscription is upon the coin? And it was Caesar's. And then he said to them, well, render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar and unto God what belongs to God. At which the Herodians were amazed and no one dared to ask Christ any more questions. But the thing is, Jews were already paying taxes to Caesar. So what was so amazing about the answer? Well, the New Testament didn't exist then. And in the Old Testament, um, the Psalms are very clear that the earth is the Lord's and everything upon it. So if everything belongs to God, what belongs to Caesar? Nothing. Right. And that also means that Caesar himself belongs to God. So political power belongs to God and therefore Christians should um, be involved in politics because that's an area of our life. Um, it's something that we can't avoid uh, and and something we should be involved in. Okay, and how do you see today's politics? Do you think it's following a Christian path at all or has it left that path long behind? No, I don't think you can, I don't think you can look at any nation state of the Western world um, and that includes the newly liberated Eastern Bloc countries and Russia from the Soviet Union um, and from Marxist ideology as, as following a Christian narrative. Um, they are following a, an enlightenment narrative, a liberal narrative, um, one that's rooted in enlightenment philosophy as opposed to drawing values and beliefs from the apostolic and prophetic teaching. Um, so in answer to your question, no. Okay. And specifically, obviously, many of our viewers are in uh, the United States. Well, what do you see is happening in their lives? Because obviously many of the, the leading politicians, that they profess that, that they're Christians, that uh, they're following the teachings of Christ in, in, in guiding their decisions. Specifically, some people in the, uh, the, the higher up positions of the of, uh, government. Yeah. How do you see it? Well, I think... I mean, firstly, if I was an American and had to choose between Hillary and Trump, I would have definitely chosen Trump. Um, and that's because Trump's out of the two of them the best man for the job. Um, he, he, but I would have, I would have chosen Trump because of the vice president. Hence, yes. I think, I think Trump personally is on a journey. I don't think he was taking his faith seriously at the beginning. Um, certainly from the other testimonials of, of the things that he's talked about uh, and, and some of his personal conduct. However, I think at the end of his presidency, he's going to be a better Christian than when he started. I think the fact that Christians have surrounded Trump is going to be good for Trump. And the fact that Christians are, are, are in the executive of the US is good. Um, however, it's not, they're not, it's not ideal because they're not following a Christian political narrative. One of the fundamental differences between a Christian political narrative and a liberal polit political narrative is that a Christian political narrative is internationalist and has as the foci of its praxis the triumph of the church. 
the nation state in a liberal narrative becomes the foci of praxis and the triumph of the state is the idea of your sort of classical liberalism. So Christianity is, is a much more internationalist political narrative. I, for, I would love to see um, Pence and Trump and American Christians advocating a, a more robust Christian solidarity within their foreign affairs policy, supporting Christians where they're being persecuted. And if necessary, that means supporting Christians to gain independence and liberation from their persecutors such as in Iraq and in Syria, where there is the possibility of setting up an independent Christian state. Yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of people have uh, described what's happening over there as a genocide uh, in, in terms of the, the Christians. The, the pop Christian population has just been utterly decimated. Yeah. Um, you may have heard recently about uh, the refugees that uh, we've been taking into the UK, yeah. where uh, all of the Christians were refused. Yes. Have you got any thoughts on that? Well, I, I think what it shows is that the liberal establishment are so determined not to allow any of the current conflicts that are going off in the world to be construed as religious conflicts, that they are deliberately skewing their um, policies to ensure that no one can, no one on either side can, can capture them and say, look, you know, this is a, a crusading army, this is a crusading nation. So they filter Christians out as a way of ensuring that Islamists can't point at the UK and go, see, you're just, you're, you're just supporting Christians. Yeah. Um, but it's also because Christians are too frightened to go to the camps that yes. are run by the UN. Um, they, they are being persecuted by the same people in the camps that would persecute them in their cities. So the churches in the Middle East create their own support networks, but the British government only seeks to take refugees from established camps, not unofficial camps. And the British government, as well as the American government, needs to accommodate how it's taking people in based upon the reality on the ground. Okay, and do you think that the, for example, uh, we have in America, we have Trump, who's at least nominally a Christian, as you say, you think he's on a journey. Um, and in the UK, we have, uh, I, I believe she's the daughter of an Anglican vicar. Theresa as, uh, May, yeah. Theresa May, as uh, the British leader. D do you think that, specifically more for Britain here, do you think that that, that in, is in any way a, a positive? Because it, it doesn't appear that many of the, the policies that are coming out are, are what we would recognize immediately as Christian, mm. Christian thought policies. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Well, I think, I think if you look at the last series of leaders that we've had in the West, as well as Putin in Russia, um, it, it begs a profound question. How is it that we have had professing Christians in, in the, the highest seats of power in the most powerful nations, and yet the Christian faith and the Christian community and the Christian church is so weak? It, it is because those Christian leaders are not following a Christian political narrative. They are following a liberal political narrative based upon the philosophies of the Enlightenment. Because they will say that they are Christian, but then they'll do a Reese Mogg and say, but my faith is private and shouldn't influence my politics. And that is not the Christian way. That's not the, 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 the way of the Christian. A disciple of Christ has to allow Christ's rulership to influence every aspect of their life, and that includes their political narrative. Okay. So what, 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 what we're seeing is the fact that Christians have this disconnection between their identity as Christians and the political narratives that they're working by. And until these two things are reconciled, we can have as many Christians in politics as we want, but we will have no influence for the church. That actually brings me to, uh, I, I, I've watched many of your videos, uh, and you talk about uh, setting up almost uh, a Christian state within a state. Yeah. Could you expand on that? So, it, it's, it's, it's rooted in the fact that, that as Christians, we are called to be in the world, but not of the world. We're called to be separate to the world. But as Christians, 
that the, the Christian community is so badly led by unimaginative, uncreative, uninspiring leaders that there are many needs within the Christian community that Christians are not able to find a match to within the community. And so they end up going outside of the community to find their needs being met. And that is a, 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 a path towards apostasy. And it is not a path towards conversion, you know. Whereas what Christians need to do is if we are going to be a light on a hill, salt in the earth, salt in the earth yeah. if we are going to be a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a people set apart unto the Lord, then we have to establish our own schools, our own, um, our own system of courtship and dating, our own way of entertaining ourselves, our own way of living a life, our own businesses that meet our own needs, uh, imbued with a spirit of excellence, our own media, our own music, our own everything as an alternative society, within society, in, in, and with a strong core identity, a powerful sense of ourself, our own culture, our own history, our own identity, our own values, our own beliefs. And only then are you going to be in a position to invite people to you Whereas at the moment, the church is working to a model that the only time we get together is on a Sunday and our, our sense of organization is very fractured. And, and the, this is part of the, the, the process of, um, uh, I forget the, the academic term, but it's part of the process of where the church loses its own identity within its own institutions. Okay. Because it can't find the Christians to fill the posts, so it ends up bringing in non-Christians to do it. So you have a number of Christian organizations founded by Christian founders who now do not follow a Christian narrative at all. And that includes even some churches, particularly the liberal churches, the Escapalian church, the Anglican church. Speaking of uh, liberals, in, in America, we would uh, refer to them as the, the left. Yeah. Uh, even in this country also, uh, we would refer to them as, as the political left. And they would argue that, uh, I believe they would argue, that these things, uh, where it's a sense of community, a sense of belonging, are all available through the state, which kind of brings us back to our first one. But you wouldn't agree with that. Well, I think as Christians, what we have to think of is the church has traveled through 2,000 years of history. The church was here when the Roman Caesars were here. And the Roman Caesars are now gone and the Roman Empire is history. The church was here when the barbarian hordes invaded Western Europe. Those barbarian hordes are now uh, were converted and from them formed kingdoms which make up the modern Western nation states. The church was here when Muhammad founded his caliphate. Well, his cal caliphate is now history. It doesn't exist. It's now rubble. The church was here when Napoleon rose. The church was here when Hitler rose. The church was here when socialism, Marxism rose. And these are all now history. How do we not think that the liberal nation state is not also going to be something simply that the church passes through and that at some future point some future christian community unless christ returns beforehand but some future christian community will look upon this nation state that we think of as nothing but something that happened in history and it no longer exists so a christian political narrative has to be based upon the identity and the community of christians and upon the triumph of the church from one generation to the next. Now, previous Christians in history, Christians in history never had a problem with that. That is why the Christians defeated the Roman Empire. That is why the Christians defeated the Islamic Caliphate. That is why the Christians managed to overcome the barbarian, Aryan, pagan invasions. But suddenly, in this modern age since the Enlightenment, suddenly we Christians are looking to the state to save us rather than having the solidarity amongst ourselves to, to, to defend our own community and to advance the goals, agenda, and, and condition of our own community and its own embitterment. Thank you. Uh, if you'd have one message to put out there, what would it be? So the, the, the church needs to um, rediscover a muscular faith. And what I mean by that is that a faith that is rooted in its own identity, rather than seeking to lean upon or borrow from the political or cultural identities of others. Uh, and that includes the secular liberal world around us. And we must be able to rediscover a muscular faith that is internationalist, 
that is in solidarity with our brothers and sisters, that has a sense of its own history, has a sense of its own cultural values, and creates the mechanisms, infrastructure, uh, and social connections to allow those values to be lived out on a grand scale with an identity that is willing and able to confront all comers, whether that be Islamists, whether that be um, the liberal progressives, or whether that be the alt-right and the right-wing nationalist extremists. The church has to be able to stand up for itself and, and to be able to do so in every sphere in every occasion and in every way. Thank you very much, Bob. This is Bob the Builder of Soko Films. Check him out on YouTube. Uh, I'm Mark Angelides for Liberty Nation. Thanks very much. Visit us at libertynation.com.